Today's video is brought to you by Upstart. This is gonna be why Ginny should have been sorted into Slytherin House because thematically it makes a heck of a lot more sense. Fight me. Hey, brother! Jay, let's talk about Ginny Weasley. Seventh Weasley child, only daughter, very funny, popular, tough, charming, and totally should have been in Slytherin. Today, we discuss. Guys, before we dive on in, I need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Upstart. Guys, as always, financial responsibility is a big deal, so be sure to do your homework and make the right decision for you. That being said, during these turbulent times, everyone out there might be looking for a way to feel a little more financially secure. So if you're throwing money every single month at high interest credit card debt, then it might be worth giving Upstart a look. Because here's the thing, nobody likes their credit card bills that much, so it may also be the case that you're not paying it that much attention. Or if you're anything like me, maybe you just set up auto draft for everything. So you really just don't ever pay it that much attention. It just automatically gets paid. And that might mean that your payments aren't going quite as far as you think they are. Because a considerable portion of that payment is just the interest and isn't actually taking down the lump sum at all. And that is where Upstart can help. You can fold multiple high interest payments into one simple, neat payment each month with a great rate. And a great rate from Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score and takes into consideration you, your education and job history. So find out how low your Upstart rate can be by going to upstart.com slash SCB. It only takes a few minutes. Again, that is upstart.com slash SCB. Link is in the description down below. Okay, so let me just say right out of the gate that today's argument is not that Ginny specifically embodies the traits of a Slytherin versus the traits of a Gryffindor. That is not today's argument. I see this as much more thematic. Like, from a storytelling perspective, the idea of Ginny being in Slytherin House would have worked out fantastically. But also, yes, I do think she embodies some of the characteristics of Slytherin House. I mean, come on, breaking into the family's Quidditch supplies for literally years without anyone noticing in order to get ahead? And now I get it, like Harry Potter is typically aimed at a younger audience, anyone aged like 6 to 100. And that sorting the good guys and bad guys into specific color-coded houses right out of the gate is a really good way to set up the story. The red lions are good, the green snakes are bad. Got it. The yellow badgers love pancakes. The silver ravens never go to class. It's all very cut and syrupy. Serious question though, why does Harry never have class with the Ravenclaws? On a completely unrelated note, go and check out these really awesome bronze eagle foil shirts that we have available at supercarlinbrothers.store. Sorry, I know that was completely out of left field. But anyway, as the story progresses, the lines between these houses do get blurrier. Where you have bad Gryffindors like Peter Pettigrew or questionable ones like Percy. Although personally, on that one, I'm pretty sure that he was under the Imperseus curse. What? Can I get a? No, but seriously, I'm pretty sure that he was under the Imperius curse, basically from the time that he graduated from Hogwarts in Harry's year three, up until the moment that he returns for the Battle of Hogwarts. Full video by clicking the card. But my issue is that even though we get a fully bad Gryffindor, we never get a fully good Slytherin. And I know, I know, people will go to their grave defending Severus Snape, saying that like Harry names his child after him. He was bullied by James. He was in love with Lily the whole time. Sorry. He hates it when I say the whole time. Always. Always. But while he does provide some positive impact on the cause that does effectively prevent a Holocaust, you can also argue that he doesn't make the decision because of good ethics or because it's even the right thing to do. But because he loved someone who did not love him back and went on to bully the children of all of the people that she chose over him. And then Draco is kind of the same. Sure, by the time you get to the cursed child, him and Harry have a peaceful respect for one another, but also with him, him, it's not like he wasn't a major jerk for most of the series. Although personally, I do believe that this could have been overcome. I mean, after all, Draco is still a child for the majority of the story, and he's very impressionable per his parents. I myself would have just absolutely loved a situation during the Battle of Hogwarts where Harry had his back completely up against the wall, and then Draco steps in and is like, Expelliarmus! Like, wow, 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 wow. How cool would that have been? Like, Draco defending Harry using Harry's signature spell. Chills! Yeah, 
Draco is totally redeemable in my book. But then there's even more likable characters like Slughorn, who does ultimately side with Dumbledore and overall seems pretty harmless. <laughs> All hands on deck, Granger. It doesn't mean that he wasn't literally picking favorites the entire time in order to look out for himself. You're quite right. Crystallized pineapple is my favorite. To be fair, he does ultimately lead some, albeit unnamed, but Slytherins all the same, back to the Battle of Hogwarts after Harry comes back to life. Or finally, Regulus Black, who is wildly popular out here in the world of fandoms, who has pretty much walked to the beat of the pureblood drum most of his life, but ultimately does stand up to Voldemort after the mistreatment of Creature, collects the locket, attempts to destroy it, but is ultimately killed himself. But what I'm trying to say is that even though we get a handful of Slytherins that are eventually good or at the very least neutral, we never get any that aren't ever bad. And this is where I personally believe that Ginny could have truly shined and added a whole new layer to the entire story. First of all, it's not like her personality doesn't fit the characteristic of the House of Slytherin, cunning, determined, ambitious. Take this line from Ginny herself. The thing about growing up with Fred and George is that you sort of start thinking anything's possible if you've got enough nerve. In a way, that's sort of the definition of ambition. Ginny is the one who comes up with the plan to use Umbridge's fireplace in order to talk to Sirius back at headquarters, and she's the best chaser on the Quidditch team, overcoming that pressure that Ron struggles so very much with, coming from a family of very impressive wizards. And she's trying to date the Chosen One. But I am the Chosen One. But I am the Chosen One. Big deal, Harry, get a new thing. Also, thanks for taking care of all more and everything. Now, again, arguing that she specifically has traits of Slytherin House is not the point of this video, although I would say it's a pretty weak argument if she doesn't embody some of the traits. So the real question is, how would this change things? Well, I think we have to start with Chamber of Secrets because that's when Ginny enters the story in earnest. You might think that Ginny being in Slytherin would make her a much more obvious candidate to be the heir of Slytherin and the one who's opening the Chamber of Secrets, but I kinda doubt it. Because keep in mind, in a family of nine people, she would have been the very first one to have been sorted anywhere outside of Gryffindor, and it would have been into the house that the Weasley family seems to kind of despise. Ha! Another Weasley. I know just what to do with you. Gryffindor! This is Ron answering Harry's question about which house his brothers were sorted into. Gryffindor. Mum and dad were in it too. I don't know what they'll say if I'm not. I don't suppose Ravenclaw would be too bad, but imagine if they put me in Slytherin. Can you imagine the kind of isolation she might feel under those circumstances? Like 11 years old and she may even feel like she doesn't belong in her own family. But then on top of that, maybe even having trouble fitting in in Slytherin house, having come from the Weasley family, which Slytherins seem to detest. Get my name's funny, do you? No need to ask you yours. Red hair and a hand-me-down robe. You must be a Weasley. You must be a Weasley. It's easy to see how quickly this can make you feel isolated and alone. In fact, it's exactly what Albus, her son, goes through when he's eventually sorted into Slytherin. I mean, geez, like, where do you think she could have possibly found a friend in a situation like that? But I also love the idea that her putting herself into the diary is part of the plot twist. That is what is making her feel so dejected. But she is actually fitting into the house and proud to be a Slytherin. Actually jumping back to the Cursed Child, if you want a true blue awesome Slytherin from start to finish, look no further than Scorpius Malfoy. He is the best, but it doesn't count, so you know. Fizzing Wisbees! If you know, you know. Anyway, back to Ginny. Being the lone member from a family that has always been sorted into a specific house would also give Ginny a really cool parallel with none other than Sirius Black, who actually shares the same distinction, just in reverse, Slytherin into Gryffindor. It makes it easy for Harry to feel sorry for Sirius, who is the only good guy inside of a family of pure blood mania Slytherins. And it helps him relate to Sirius as well, feeling like they grew up with a hard home life and alone, and they didn't really feel accepted until they got to Hogwarts. And if he felt like he had that much in common with Sirius, maybe he would also recognize how much he had in common with Ginny. 
Except for the home life thing. She has an amazing home life. Not my daughter, you The point is, it comes back to a line that Sirius says to Harry. Yes, but the world isn't split into good people and death eaters. And to be fair, in that specific instance, he's actually talking about Umbridge and using that sentence to say that you could still be a bad person and not be a death eater. But I think that Ginny could really easily represent the other half of that coin, which is being in Slytherin and not being a bad person. And that is actually something that I do believe that young kids could absolutely use when getting invested in this world. For example, my nephew on Alice's side of the family is just starting to get into Harry Potter and sure enough, wanted to go online and get sorted into his house. And he was so excited about it, but ultimately distraught because he was sorted into Slytherin and he felt like that meant that he was a bad guy. And to be honest with you, it's actually a very similar feeling that I myself had when I was personally sorted into Slytherin at a much older age. But here's the thing, Slytherin does not mean bad. But you can't exactly blame kids for thinking that way because as you go through the entire story, there's not a purely good Slytherin. Harry himself literally spends the entire second book of the series fearing that he was supposed to be placed in Slytherin house. And even after he defeats Slytherin's heir and slays the Basilisk, he doesn't get actual affirmation that he's meant to be in Gryffindor house until he realizes that Godric Gryffindor's name is on the sword that he pulled out of the hat. I can only imagine how it might feel to a child being sorted into this house after having spent so many books learning that they're the bad guys. But if Harry's wife, the person that the chosen one ultimately loves comes from that house, I feel like that makes a really good case for it. It means that Harry can hate and defeat Voldemort, but also love and marry someone from the same house. And actually on that note, did you know that Ginny and Voldemort uniquely share the Wandwood of you. Even this could be used to explain how different one Slytherin can be to the next. This is what it says on Pottermore about wands made of yew wood. However, it is untrue to say, as those unlearned in wand lore often do, that those who use yew wands are more likely to be attracted to the dark arts than another. The witch or wizard best suited to a yew wand might equally prove a fierce protector of others. Also, I think it's kind of cool that Harry would have had the matching core to Voldemort's wand and Ginny the matching wand would. Besides all of that though, how cool would it have been to watch Harry and Ginny show down in Quidditch? Harry beating Slytherin in Quidditch would have literally meant that he was beating the girl that he likes. Not that that was a problem, you know, with Cho or anything. Actually, that brings up a better question. Could Harry have even beaten Ginny? She does go on to be a professional Quidditch player. But also it would have meant that Ginny and Malfoy would have had to have worked together, which I think also opens the door for lots of other really cool storytelling blah. So guys, for my question of the day, I need to know what you think on this one. Do you think that Ginny could have been in Slytherin house or are you happy with the kind of morally gray heroes we have as is? Also on that note, who do you believe to be the most redeemable Slytherin that we have in this story. Be sure to leave all your thoughts in the towel section down below and always remember to play nice. We're all here to have fun. Also guys, in addition to that super cool foil bronze eagle shirt that we have, we have a complete collection including a golden lion, a silver snake, and a black badger. Link in the description down below. Be sure to check it out. But guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like some more Harry Potter action from us, you can check out this video right here where we discuss whether or not it's possible that Hagrid could have been a Slytherin. But otherwise, guys, until next week, bye.